Hi, hello, hi. So today I want to talk to you all about something important regarding the Philly Trans Health Conference. I apologize because I know I made a video kind of of this nature last week and I like to kind of not have too many back-to-back -to -back serious or heavy videos. I like to kind of alternate them with like a little more fun videos, but this is important. Someone sent it to me and I really just feel like I should talk about this now. Thank you for understanding. I was sent this link on Twitter and it's from someone who was one of the organizers at the Philadelphia Trans Wellness Conference, previously known as the Philadelphia Trans Health Conference. You may have heard Chase and I talk about this a lot on the podcast. This is, from what I know, one of the biggest trans wellness or trans health conferences or trans conferences in general in America and I'm pretty sure Canada too because I don't know of any in Canada so let's just say North America. The person who wrote this was someone who was part of the group of mostly volunteer trans planning committee for the Philadelphia Trans Health Conference and they worked with the Mazzoni Center. The Mazzoni Center is a health organization in Philadelphia that works with the LGBTQIA community, especially with the trans community, helping trans folk get hormones and hormone blockers. The Philly Trans Wellness Conference did not originally involve the Mazzoni Center whatsoever. It was entirely run by the trans community and the Mazzoni Center only got involved in 2006. And since then, this trans-led organization made up of mostly volunteers, so these people aren't even being paid for their work. We're taking care of the community side of things, whereas the Mazzoni Center was taking care of the professional track, from what I understand, the professional track being the paid track and the community track being the free track, free to everyone who attends. And it worked like that for a long time and they had an understanding and based on this press release that I'm reading, apparently they've recently broken that understanding that they had with the trans-led organization. The conference this year will be run only by the Mazzoni Center for the first time since its existence, and the people who are running it are entirely Cis. There are no trans people whatsoever involved in the organization of the Philly Trans Wellness Conference this year. However, they're continuing to act as though it is trans organized. The last I checked the website, they're acting like they're still working with this committee or that trans people are still involved when they absolutely are not. Apparently, there's been some conflict between the Mazzoni Center and this trans led organization for a while now, and there were some decisions, it's not super clear, uh, that the Mazzoni Center wanted to make some things that they wanted to implement that would make some of the trans people attending the conference uncomfortable or feel unsafe. Uh, so that's been an ongoing conflict apparently. There's a whole lot of info here and I'm going to leave the link in the description so you could read it yourself if you would like to. But basically the Mazzoni Center is being kind of exploitative, kind of not at all listening to the trans community, have completely removed the trans individuals who were participating in the organization of this event from the event, continue to pretend as though they are part of the event. And it's just overall not a very comfortable situation. I do wish there were more details. I don't have more details as of right now, but I felt like I should make this video because a lot of people come to this conference to meet trans YouTubers, trans social media posters, stuff like that. It's not to say like, I'm so important, people travel to meet me. Not at all. It's just the Philly Trans Wellness Conference, out of all of the trans wellness conferences and trans health conferences that go on has become kind of almost like a trans vidcon in my opinion um, on a much smaller scale but it's kind of like a lot of these folk will come here to get information to have access to brands that sell uh, these products that cater to trans individuals but also to meet some of these trans folk that they know of online who do work within the community and that includes myself I'm not saying i'm like oh so popular not at all about that i feel like i should talk about this because it seems like what they're doing is super not okay if you are running a trans conference especially if you are insinuating that this is a trans conference run by trans people you should have trans people actually involved in running it i've always loved the trans wellness conference because they put a lot of emphasis on intersectionality that includes being accessible having a lot of panels about disability a lot of spaces for disabled folk, including autistic folk and people who are overstimulated. There's a lot of focus on people of color within the trans community. People from First Nation communities have a lot of really amazing workshops at this conference. There are a lot of safe spaces, so let's say at the bottom surgery show and tell, it's only for trans masculine individuals who are looking to have bottom surgery and not for curious cis individuals, cis loved ones who want to be better prepared. You know, there are panels for them, but it is not the show and tell. They're very risky respectful and careful when it comes to the vulnerability involved in this conference. The vulnerability that comes with being a part of this community and talking about some of these things and exposing ourselves in some of the ways in which we do at the conference. So I find that they've been amazing with that kind of stuff. Super respectful, super conscious, just so socially aware. And it's one of the main reasons why I really like this conference. And to know that the people who were responsible for that, to know that they're no longer a part of the organization of the conference, and that they've been removed against their 
their will from something that they started themselves, it makes me really uncomfortable. And I think that if this continues, uh, this upcoming conference will be the last conference that I attend. I don't think that what the Benzoni Center is doing is okay. I know that they have a history of doing a lot of things that actually aren't very okay. I'm not gonna get into that now because I don't have enough information to make big claims, but I know that this is a thing. I think that sometimes some activists start to believe that they are exempt from some of their privileges. I don't know if I'm explaining that well, but let's say sometimes it feels like some allies who are activists within communities that they are not a part of feel as though they are exempt from their privilege because of the activism work that they've done. There is a difference between speaking over a community and amplifying the voices within the community. And speaking on behalf of our community or working on behalf of our community because you think you're doing what's best for us is kind of patronizing and condescending and actually quite oppressive. Stripping trans people of their power? Not okay. You should absolutely have trans organizers at this event because although you may think you know everything about this community and all of our needs because you've worked with us for so long, nonetheless you are not a part of this community. There are certain realities you just will not face. You won't be equipped to keep up with the changing needs of this community and to keep us safe the way that we know how to keep us safe. You should absolutely continue to work with the community and support the community, but eliminating the trans voices that you have and entirely taking control over the situation, that's that's talking over someone. That That is not amplifying voices. It, it, it's, it's eliminating voices. I've seen this in a lot of activism, that sometimes some individuals will think that they're exempt, that their privilege doesn't count, that they don't have the ability to oppress, so they'll think it's okay for them to say certain things, to make certain claims. They'll think it's okay for them to be a part of certain groups so that they could do more activist work, but you still, you never have the right to be infiltrating a safe space that you do not belong in. Sometimes some people will think that they have a place in certain communities that they have worked with just because they've worked with them. Regardless, the privilege that you have, it exists. It exists whether or not you are the most aware person in the world and you amplify all the voices in the world, you still have privilege. And with privilege comes the ability to oppress. Privilege doesn't only mean that there are obstacles that you won't face or obstacles that you may not even have to be aware of because of the fact that you're never going to encounter them. Your social awareness of those obstacles doesn't eliminate your privilege. With privilege also comes the ability to oppress. Because of that, you have to be very mindful of speaking over people. Activism isn't about glorifying yourself and coming across as a hero. Amplifying other people's voices isn't about, look at me, I'm so great, aren't I so nice and so aware, I care so much about marginalized communities. It's not about that, it's not about you. It is about the voices that you are amplifying. Your emphasis should be on them. A great example is when I gave a talk at my work about transition in the workplace. My name was nowhere to be found. It wasn't in the title, it wasn't in the description, it was nowhere. It was just the name of this cis person who was spearheading the event, basically who ordered catering for the event. And I, the organizer, the person who put together all this information, the person who was making myself vulnerable and outing myself to this room full of people, my name was nowhere. I was just, you know, featuring this trans employee. I have a name. I'm not just a trans employee. And this person was so busy patting themselves on the back because of the fact that they spearheaded this event and it was all because of them. It's like, I, I see where people get lost in this because they are doing work and they think that they're doing well, but it is so important to actually be giving us the microphone. Not to be doing it for reasons of making yourself look good so that you're in control. It's not about you. If you are going to be amplifying the voices of others, you have to also give them independence and give them power. It's not about they get to speak when you give them permission to. They get to speak when they're saying things that you agree with. They get to speak on your terms. It is not about that. It's that they get to speak and you are going to amplify what they are saying and you are going to trust them to know best to speak on their own behalf and to speak on their own experiences as being part of that marginalized community that you pretend to care so much about. And I'm not saying you pretend to care as in they don't actually care, I'm just saying they are under the impression that they care but sometimes end up doing harm, much like it seems the Mazzoni Center is doing right now. So it's not to make this into a big deal or anything like that, I wanted to make this video to say I am aware of this situation, if you are attending the conference you should also be aware of this situation, and this year's conference may be the last conference that I attend if things continue to escalate from here. So that's it, that's my video about this. I'm sorry that I've released two very serious videos back to back. I will try to release some fun animated stuff soon. I appreciate you being patient and listening to what I have to say nonetheless. And thank you so much for being here. If you have any comments, questions, further information that you could shed on the situation, feel free to leave those in the comments section down below. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and a great week and you take care of yourselves. All right, thanks.